hello you beautiful souls welcome back to my channel my name is michelle we talk all things life love spirituality law of attraction and all of that juicy goodness we are here for our weekly energy reading and uh it is the first week in november heck yes we're moving along we're closing out 2023 can you guys believe it i feel like it's just flown by I cannot believe 2020 was almost three years ago. So insane. Okay, so let's call in our guides and angels, Archangel Michael, Archangel Metatron, please open sacred, sacred space. Please bless me, bless my cards, bless my viewers, only allow the highest and whitest light messages to come through. Please motivate us and activate us to take action on the things we need to take action on. Help us find peace during the chaos. Help us find stillness and let us know that it's okay to rest, which I've been struggling with. And I just got guided to say, if you're not getting clues on what's next for you, then it's just not time yet. And we have to rest and be still in the unknown. A lot of times our ego might sound like we got to do something. We got to wake up. We've got to create. We're not creating. We're messing up our lives or we need to leave this job or we have to leave this relationship. And there's an order to everything. Um, and that's what I've learned on my six year journey. Uh, when I spiritually awakened, I started to track all the happenings in my life, in my clients lives. I started doing readings about five to six years ago. And it was such a trend to see that sorry, I just kicked the table <laughs> that it's funny that I kicked the table, but it's like a jolt. Like it's a trend to see, like, we just want to quickly leap into our happiness and into our joy, but it's a process to get us where we're meant to be doing what we're meant to be doing. And I'm sure some of you saw on my community page, I posted about the gene keys and they're so magical. And um, there is, it's almost like a birth chart, but it's a form of human design as well. So when you uncover what your gene keys are and like there's a little diagram where it shows like your life's work, the center of the chart is kind of like the core of who you are and what you're meant to do in this lifetime. And it shows you like the shadow, the aspects that hold you back from doing those things. And there was something that I read about myself, which I just was like, yes, it's full permission for me to be myself was it said like, what makes me healthy? The thing that makes me healthy the most is me being, and this is everybody, but just for me specifically, me being my most authentic self. Like, so doing my hair like this, wearing the jewelry that I'm wearing, picking out the tops that I want to wear, wearing no bra if I don't want to wear a bra, wearing Nike socks. If I want to wear Nike socks with a cute girly top, I can do it all. And for so long, I restricted myself and how I dressed. And I always wanted to please the boyfriend that I had or the friends that I was friends with. And reading that, and ever since I started YouTube, I'm pretty much myself. I pretty much do everything that I want to do. And I get the flowers I want to get. And it took me a while to get there. I'm 41 years old and it did not happen overnight by any means, but this is your full permission at the start of this reading, this weekly energy reading message is coming out saying, please embrace your authentic self. If you want to wear something, wear it. If you want to go somewhere, go there. You have to follow that inner calling. And just me getting ready this morning, I posted like two shorts. I posted a short of me dancing because I was prepping, opening up my channel, getting ready, like calling my guides into my house to create the sacred space. So I had some Paula Abdul on, so I quickly filmed that. I'm like, people need to know that whatever you want to do, you're allowed to do, and you don't have to hide. And for so long, I hid in my life because I was a teacher, and I was not allowed to make posts like that dancing. You know, that would be seen as inappropriate. Um, so I felt like I was in a prison for 17 years, and even through my childhood, I felt like I was in a prison. So this, like, second half of my life is all, like, Michelle coming out of her cave, doing it, whatever the hell she wants, um, and just doing it in integrity too, and teaching other people how to embrace every aspect of what your soul came here to do. And another thing I learned about myself, which I think is a message for all of you, is that we don't know, like me bumping the table saying sometimes we want to like 
um, quickly know everything and, and jump into that new job and that new partnership, but we don't always know the next step. So part of my DNA is I just take it day by day. I read the energy of the day. What do I want to do today? Do I want to just sleep all day? Okay, well, I will make space for my soul and body to rest. And I will trust that money will come if I need it. And that's starting to live in the moment, allowing the universe to move you to where you're supposed to go next, who you're supposed to go with next. Um, and so many things unfold so beautifully when we do this. We just have to get out of our own way. The ego will say, we can't take off work. I can't rest all day. That I'll be lazy. I'll be bad. And if there's like these these rules that we put on ourselves and we have to stop with that. And we have to just choose the, the lightest, highest feeling in our body at the moment uh, and go and do it. Like this morning, I woke up at like 4.30 a.m. It was really 5.30, but our clocks moved back an hour. So I was up at 4.30, didn't know it was 4.30. <laughs> I was like, oh, it's 5.30. I might as well go get my coffee and go watch the sunrise. And I get in my car and thank God I got to the coffee place right as it was opening. <laughs> the timing of starting my car, warming it up. I was just wide awake and I was not planning to do all of this this morning. I wasn't, I was going to do a reading at some point today, but I came back early, did my dishes, saw the sunrise before that felt so good. And then I just was like, I had this urge to dress really cute and to put makeup on. And I was like, okay, I'm going with this. I wasn't planning on doing this today, but I'm just going to roll with it because it feels really good right now. So this is being moved. My soul moved me to wake up early, to be energized. <laughs> By the time this reading is hitting around 9 a.m., I'm normally not this energized at 9 a.m. So I was prepared for this reading. So we're going to bring you all the messages that you need to hear. I'm going to start with my spirit animal book. We're going to do a lot of spirit animals in this reading. I just feel guided to do that. So remember, we don't always know where we're going next. We just have to wake up and do what feels right to us. And I just heard that somebody was very much so in their head last night. If you were panicking about finances, about work, about taking that leap of faith, going towards what you want to go towards. Um, sometimes the best thing to do is to get out of the head. You're going to get out of that thought process and go distract yourself, go for a drive, go be with people and tell yourself that this is my ego, really trying to control the unknown, which we don't know what it is. And it's not my job to force more money to come or to force myself into a new position at work. We sit back and we allow the universe to move us. We allow the universe to bring us our next steps. And then we go towards the inspired action. Okay. The inspired action is our highest joy. It, what, it's what makes us feel good. It's what made me want to do my hair and my makeup this morning. I just felt excited for it. So we have to learn to tune into our body and to make sure it's a clear vessel you know, I didn't have any junk in my body. I didn't have any sugar in my body. So I was clear and I could understand that call. Um, so I just looked down and we have the hippopotamus and we have the horse. So I think I'm going to take both. Let me get my glasses on. I don't know why I feel guided to read both. Hippopotamus, trust your intuition and act on it. <laughs> yet stay grounded at the same time. Your skin is especially sensitive right now. So moisturize with lotion as needed and use sunscreen when exposed to the sun for any length of time. It's critical that you don't deviate from your path at this time. So stay true to yourself and don't let anything distract you. Now is the time to immerse yourself in whatever artistic or creative endeavor you want to accomplish and stay with it to completion. Be protective toward any or your artistic, any of your artistic creations and don't let anyone demean or criticize your work. Okay, so the hippo is all about listening to your issue, intuition. If you feel called to create something like I did this morning, I felt called to do this reading, um, go with it and finish it. Don't leave it pending. Okay, and now we have the horse. Ooh, you're about to embark on an unexpected adventure and will have to move very quickly. 
throat chakra go nuts. Once it's initiated, it's time to free yourself from those physically and emotionally constricting aspects of your life. You need to call upon reserves of stamina and strength to get you through this ordeal. You're much more powerful than you think you are. This situation requires strong warrior energy balanced with sensitivity, patience, and compassion. Teamwork with your family and friends or community is important right now. Ooh, I like this. If anyone wants to get a screenshot. So the hippo says, get started on a project and follow it through. Follow that intuition. The horse is saying, maybe this project is going to pick up momentum and uh, maybe it's going to take you to a new opportunity, to a new job, to a new person, a new city. And it says stamina and strength. First two messages. I like that a lot. Okay, let's do the Sword of Light deck. And I have my 777 Money is Coming card as our theme. I forgot to mention that. It's something I pulled the other day and it feels right for this week. So somebody might be coming into money. I know last week we had a big abundance week for some people and that, that reading was spot on. Okay, let's spread them out. Let's see what card. There's a bunch. I'm gonna take the top one that I grabbed. Success, number 33. This is such an abundant like waterfall kind of flowy coming in from this man's chest. It's like the universe is this man and he's the sun all at once. He's the water, he's the earth, he's everything. So when we see the universe provides for us and it is literally giving us, I just talked about the three pillars of health also in a short recently, which is um, clean water, making sure you're putting clean water, drinking out of glass um, not plastic. I'm making the switch now to try not to drink any more water bottles. Um, I got a water purifier and osmosis. It's a, a reverse osmosis machine. Um, so I'm making sure I'm putting clean water in my body. Sunshine is number two. And the third pillar is the emotional healing, clearing your chakras. Your chakras hold all of your emotions and your traumas from your past. So these three pillars, water, sunshine, and clearing your chakras, are, are proven to um, improve the longevity of our lives. So they're, they're even saying like, yes, movement is great, but it's not in the top three anymore. Your chakra system is now in the top three, which is your emotional state, your stress, your trauma. So once we can purify our nervous system from that, we are in a better state. Our body, we're giving our body a better chance of survival rather than just grinding in the gym and then ignoring the emotional trauma. Does that make sense? So success is, I'm seeing this as abundance in whatever way that looks to you, whether that's abundance in your career, abundance in nature, getting out and realizing that, oh my gosh, I have always been provided for by the universe. And when I take this leap of faith and I jump off of this cliff, the universe is gonna catch me and I'm gonna be okay. And a lot of us right now are in this like hanged man energy. We are waiting. We're feeling stagnant. We're feeling like, what is going on with my life? I can't wake up and do this another minute. But that's all the, the ego gripping and wanting to know what's next in the future. And we don't always need to know. We have to take it day by day and follow the lightest feeling in our body. So if you're somebody that goes to bed every night and you kind of dread tomorrow, your mind is now in this, it's like a, a pattern loop. It's just a habit at this point. You're just used to thinking those thoughts and your body's used to feeling that way. So you have to kind of throw a wrench into that cycle and break it. A wrench could be doing something different. It could be meditation. It could be going to a different gym, working out in nature where maybe you don't normally do that. You have to just change something about your daily routine because that shifts the, the universe's 
expectation of you. You know, you show the universe that you're going to certain places at certain times. We always want to be constantly shifting and changing to let the universe know we're open and we're flexible to go with the flow of life. When we get rigid and we don't want to leave and we don't want to go anywhere, that's when our, our abundance flow kicks off. Okay. So we have to stay open to the flow and to stay open to the flow. We have to clear our energy. We have to make sure we're putting good things in our body. We have to get sunshine. We have to feel good, follow the lightest feeling in our body and do things different when we get stuck. Okay. You're going to do things different when you get stuck. Being guided to use the Kim Kranz Wild Unknown and my watch just buzzed. Mm -hmm weekly report for my um electronic usage <laughs> no thanks don't need to know it don't want to feel bad about myself <laughs> on how much i'm on youtube on my phone okay starfish this always isn't the easiest card to get <laughs> because the starfish isn't just about the beach in this specific deck um, it's not about vacation. It's not about being a star or the star card in the tarot. This is kind of about, about somebody's focus too much on their appearance. They're worried that somebody's not going to love them for what they look like. So we're moving into, into divine feminine and divine masculine energy right now. Somebody thinks that they won't, they're not worthy of love because of how they look. And, you know, maybe you've been in past partnerships where people, made comments about your body. I know I have, I, you know, my boyfriend broke up with me back in 2017 or 18. I was devastated. I couldn't eat, couldn't sleep with skin and bones. And then maybe two months later he came back and we talked things out and I was so like grateful. And I was like, okay, let's try to work this out. And like the first night that we were back together, um, you know, obviously we were like making out. It felt so good to be in, in each other's energy again. And he had the nerve to ask me where my butt went. He's like, where'd your butt go? And in that moment, I just was like, this is conditional love. This is a hundred percent conditional love. He needs my body to feel and look a certain way to please him. And in that moment, I was like, it's over. I'm like, why did I even get so upset? Like, I can't believe, but that was my wounding being attached to that, right? Like I didn't know what unconditional love was back then. So now us, as we move on in life after those situations, we can now see how maybe we were treating ourselves that way. Maybe we were thinking we need to look a certain way to be in a partnership with somebody else and the right person will love you in all forms. Of course, they might want you to be healthy so that you'll be happy but they don't want you to be looking a certain way to be a trophy for them. That is not unconditional love. Okay, so keep that in mind. It is a red flag if somebody is hyper-focused on your appearance and they need you to look a certain way to please them. That is conditional love. It's not healthy. Um, it's possession. It's, an, uh, it's one ego trying to possess another ego, okay? always be mindful. When I first learned about the ego back in 2018, it was so cool because you could walk into any conversation with somebody and you could be like, you could pinpoint, oh, they're an ego right now. Anytime they were in judgment, in comparison, complaining, you could just witness the person's ego talking through them. And you could just have so much compassion. My heart used to explode when I would talk to people and I could see their ego was wrecking them and it was telling them all these lies and these stories. And I'm like, they don't have to listen to that voice. And I would just want to jump into their mind and tell the ego to shut up so their soul could come through. But we can't do that. Everybody has to learn on their own journey and their own pace. But it's wild to observe other people's minds and what their ego tells them. So one thing I learned about this card is that when you walk up to somebody, you know, there's a girl in um, my extended, extended family who every time I see her, the first thing she compliments is my physical body. She'll every single time. It's just she's so conditioned to be looking at the physical form of everybody because that's what her ego finds um, worth in. So she's immediately comparing herself to every person she comes in contact with. And if somebody looks really good, she's like, wow, you're really thin or you're really fit or wow, you look, you know, strong or it's just her first, her ego. It's not her soul. It's her ego's first thought to comment on 
because that's what her ego was always focused on within herself. So when we awaken to the ego, we start to see how it does this. We don't always have to say the words that it's thinking. We can pull back and say, I'm not really concerned about the per what the person looks like ego. I like myself the way I am. If I'm 10 pounds overweight, oh, well, maybe I need it for this winter season to feel comfy and cozy with a little extra fluff to make me feel good and appreciate warm food. You know, in the winter, that's that time to put on an extra few pounds to feel that warmth. And our bodies naturally do that too, following the seasons. So the ego likes to focus on that, but we have to stop that. And we have to say, no, I love myself in all shapes. I love other people in all shapes. And I won't dare comment on their body when I see them, because then that shows that that's what I'm focused on. And I don't want to give off that, that um, message that says, you know, you need to look a certain way for me to like you. I don't ever want anyone to think that I want to come up and say, oh my gosh, I, I miss your energy. It's so good to see you. What's, what are you into lately? Like, what are you excited about? Are you working on a project? Like you immediately go to the person's purpose and their passion and um, their energy, not at all the physical form. Okay. So the starfish card is all about not being superficial and really getting to the core of the being the core of the soul and who they are and what they came here to do. And when we activate these conversations in other people, you might actually be awakening them, them to their ego. I just heard the more you activate and start conversations that way, you're helping other people awaken. Drink break. Here we go. We're gonna get an angel wisdom tarot. What other message do we need to hear? Transformation. Yep. A significant life experience that requires changes to be made. Powerful and often unexpected revelations. Breaking free of procrastination. Releasing old belief systems. Guess what card this is? This is the ego death card. <laughs> You're releasing old belief systems. This castle that you built back here was built on sand. We're tearing it all down. Everything that you thought was true about your life, we're breaking it down. And this could be a partner for you guys. This could be somebody in your life. Maybe it's your partner going through a spiritual awakening or somebody around you, but somebody in your life is going through this like crumbling. They're realizing that everything they once believed, they can't, it's not real. You know, we're living in this movie. Life is this video game. My mentor always calls it a video game, which I like it. She always says when I'm like, and when I come to her feeling depressed or sad or like feeling like something's wrong with me or I'm not taking action, she's like, all right, you're leveling up. She's like, you got to get to the next level in the game. You might have to let go of some things. You might have to let go of some people, some belief systems. So this is the releasing of the pressure you put on yourself to look a certain way, to be a certain way. You're releasing that. You're transforming Let's get another card. And don't forget, 33, the success card. Wow, we got the wheel. Everything is clicking into place. It's a completion energy, like full circle. A fresh new start or the end of delays, sudden or unexpected progress, a very positive change in your life, travel or a new vehicle. So somebody's going to be booking a trip or traveling somewhere. I know I'm going to Florida soon. I just booked my trip. Last night, I got my flight for like $59. It was like so fast. I was on um, Instagram DMing one of my friends who I'm going to be visiting. And I literally was like, oh, I need to book my flight. I've been meaning to do that. I got to find an Airbnb. And I just literally went on my phone. It took me five minutes to book the flight, the car, and the Airbnb. And it all happened so fast. And it was all like under, I think it was under like $1,400 the whole trip. I was like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. I was so pumped. And the universe brought me $3,000 last month out of nowhere. So I can easily use that money to pay for the trip. So this is the energy that I'm talking about. It's fast movement. So this week, there might be something coming in, an opportunity to travel or an opportunity to buy something new, like a new car. And you're going to know it's right because it's going to move fast. It's like the, the hippo and the horse energy from 
the Spirit Animal book. And if anyone wanted to see what book this was, I'm sorry, I didn't mention it. It's by Stephen Farmer. But the horse spirit was fast movement. Like you got to be willing to say yes. You got to be willing to go. You got to pack your bags. You got to have the conversation. Um, when you feel that lightest feeling in your body, just follow it. Be a daredevil. My motivation to all of you is say F it. I'm saying yes. I'll figure it out later. Okay. That is your mantra this week. F it. I'm saying yes. And I'll figure it out later. Do not stay in something that is uncomfortable. It's a clear sign that you're being guided to go somewhere new. Ooh, Emperor. Look at what we have. We have the Ace of Swords, which is the little boy energy. He's new on the journey. He's a novice. He's scared, but he is turning into the emperor. He is kicking ass because look, the emperor is holding a sword, right? And look, the little boys, he's just getting his sword. So now it's like such a transformation energy. The emperor is transformed. He is now, so emperor is divine masculine energy. I'll read these to you guys. The ace of swords is brilliant ideas that may need refinement, overcoming obstacles with faith that everything will work out, communicate clearly and concisely, remain objective. The emperor says logic and organization will increase your success. Take charge of the situation, accept a leadership role, structure and discipline. So this little boy has a little butterfly on his shoulder too, which I love. Reminds me of my mama. I asked her to send me butterflies ever since she passed. Um, but he is literally, he went from having like these little bit of glimmers of ideas and now he's taking action towards it. Now he's saying, I'm going, I'm going for it. I now take leaps of faith and I have complete trust that the universe will guide me and he wasn't always like that. It's now a transformation. He's now seeing, I just heard that somebody's divine masculine is seeing the signs that other people have been talking about that maybe they didn't believe in before. And now they're seeing it and now they're going, okay, I think I can trust this. I think I can go towards this. Or maybe even with the wheel card, maybe they went somewhere, maybe they traveled and they saw your face everywhere. They saw your name everywhere. They're feeling this energy of the universe wants me to go towards him or her. And now I have no choice. I have to take the leadership role and I have to lead this partnership because you guys have a mission together. So if anybody's looking to manifest a special person, maybe you haven't met your person yet, who you just know is your match for life, because when you meet them, you'll know. You'll know by the eye contact. But if you want to manifest and work towards understanding how to attract that kind of partner, you have to love yourself. So I'll link here uh, my most recent video that I did where there was a couple ways. Um, I think it was three, two or three ways to manifest your special person. So I'll link that here for you guys to take a look at. Okay, let's do a little mic of magic. She always brings the magic. It's time to create. This is that leadership role. This could be creating the partnership together or this could be creating a project. Okay, we have you are king or queen, never settle. Know your worth, I just heard. Destiny has a plan for you. Let go of the need to know. Free your mind. That's that ego. You're going to let go of the ego's grip and wondering, what am I supposed to create? I don't know. I don't know what the plan is. You don't need to know. That's where it moves through you. It comes through you one day. You wake up and you're like, oh, somebody just mentioned this job opportunity. Somebody just mentioned this project. I feel like I want to go towards it. So then you go towards it. You'll know when it's time. I just heard. You'll know when it's time. Okay, I'm going to take all of these because I love this deck and there's so many. You've Your dream job is on the way. The universe adores you. This means the universe is taking care of you. You are being admired online. 
So if you're not somebody who's online and you're not posting, this could be in your like community. Somebody is observing you and watching you in your community. And then if you are online, 100%, people are making fake accounts. They're checking in on you. They're, they're watching your stories to see what you're doing. And a lot of times when people do have a partner that comes in and maybe they ghost them, or maybe it's that twin flame dynamic where there's separation for healing, the divine masculine or the divine feminine can be the chaser or the runner. But normally the runner is always going to come back and check on their person because they want to make sure they're, they're safe because they love them. They want to make sure that they're doing well. They want to see where they're at on their ego transformation. They're, they're seeing what kind of post you're posting to see if you're posting from ego because ego will keep you guys separate. And they also get a little like, it's almost like an injection of your juice. They feel your energy when they see your social media. And my watch just buzzed as I said that. Yeah. So they feel that energy. They see your name and they're like, oh. They're like, I miss her. I love him. Um, just looking at their eyes sometimes can reinvigorate your soul and it motivates you to then go to the gym, to then take action on a project. So you're, I'm getting a message that your energy activates this divine masculine or divine feminine. It's like you do something to them every time they look at your page. Or maybe it's when they see you in public. Because if they're not on social media, then it's in your community. It says, and also I just heard for a specific case that maybe they have old voicemails of your messages and they re-listen to your voice memos or voicemails. Okay, they, they get activated by your voice. Ooh, a new partner. And what do you desire? You now have the opportunity to write the script according to your heart's truest desire. Once you clearly decide upon your true desires and know that you're ready and deserving of them, they'll rush into your life as if by magic. So when you finally surrender and say, I'm worthy of this love, I'm worthy of having everything I've ever wanted, that's when it jumps into your life. And then a new partner, a chance meeting is no mistake. It is divinely orchestrated as a catalyst to set the wheels in motion for the fruition of your prayers. Pay careful attention to new people we send you into your life. You will recognize them by the sense of familiarity, comfort, and safety. I know I'm looking for that. I'm looking for safety. I love this. This is beautiful. Your angels are sending somebody new or sending somebody from your past back in who is going to make you feel so safe. And you're going to feel, I just heard that somebody's going to feel like the king or queen they've always wanted to be treated as. We're going to do some more animals after this. Let's get a couple more spirit. Well, hello. Deciding between two options. Okay, so I just heard to, I heard karmic partner. And normally when there's a karmic partner, the divine masculine is, I don't know why I'm still wearing these. <laughs> sorry lemon um the divine masculine gets how do we say it like uh it's funny that i took my glasses off because it's kind of going to symbolize this it's like they get um they're in a trance they get brainwashed by this karmic partner but it's the universe is doing it's not the karmic partner the universe is literally making this person pull the masculine and, or the divine feminine into this other partnership to be all clouded, to be like, what's going on? I don't understand what's going on here. Is this love? I don't know. I feel good. Is it wounding? And maybe that person doesn't treat them very well. And it's very karmically driven. So the universe puts divine masculine or divine feminine in these partnerships to show them what love isn't, to show them what conditional love is. And a lot of times we're drawn to that brainwashing and we feel like we're in a cloud and we can't really see what's real and what's not real. And we're just under this trance of this other person because we're so enamored by them, but it's not really love. It's the wounding that has put you in that trance and you're not seeing clearly. And then one day the universe will show up and put some glasses on your face <laughs> and it'll say, oh my gosh, I can see clearly now. This is not for me. 
this is not where I want to be right now. And how do I leave it? How do I take that leap of faith? And sometimes, you know, the deciding between the two options is that it's hard for um, your counterpart or somebody to decide between what's real and what's not when they've been so in their head and clouded. Now they don't trust themselves. And that's where I say you follow the lightest feeling in your body, whoever you're with that makes you feel safe, that makes you feel protected, that makes you feel heard and seen. And a huge sign is they want you to be better. They ask about your health. They ask about your body. They ask about your work. You know, these are divine connections where people want you to grow and to be better. Please do not be with somebody who's not encouraging your growth that's that brainwashing of, and I don't want to call it brainwashing, but do you guys know what I mean? Where you get kind of like hooked into somebody's pattern and it's not love. They're, they're stifling your growth. You're not able to grow with them, but you're like, you got, they have this like hook in you where you keep going back to them. You keep going back to them because it's your hormones and your dopamine that's rising every time you see this person smile at you, or if they're wearing a cute outfit or something, and you're like, I got to not see them anymore because it's like a drug. And that's where those toxic partnerships come into play because it's the wounding. Um, and it's the, the habit. It's really just a habit at this point of getting the attention that you used to get from them. And when you don't get it, you feel like you're losing love, but you're really just losing the addiction. And it sucks to have to break an addiction. It doesn't feel good. But what we do is re we replace it with a new addiction. We start to love ourselves. We start to give ourselves that same high by empowering ourselves to say, we're not going to do this anymore. We're not going to you know, entertain somebody who's not honoring us. And it's just a quick little fix for them, you know? Okay. Spirit song tarot. Yes. We have the dolphin card and the dragonfly. So we have three of shells. This is connection, communication. Um, I know it doesn't say that at the bottom, but it's like a playful energy where people are going to collaborate together and they're going to swim around together. They're going to have fun. It says playfulness and bliss. So celebration, this could be marriage. This could be people coming together for a pregnancy, um, to celebrate the news of a pregnancy. I feel guided. That's a really strong message out there. Somebody in your family, you're going to get news this week that somebody's pregnant. Okay, we have six of feathers. Yay, this is coming out of dark times and into better times. Transition insight. So this is the six of swords. So you're coming out of, and the six of swords in the original tarot is a man taking his family by boat. And he's swimming away, or there he's rowing, not swimming. He's rowing away from the storm. So he's taking his family to brighter days. So it's very unique that this is saying a celebration is coming this week. And you've been through such dark times. This is something you've been waiting for for a really long time. And I just saw a new partner. So there might be somebody coming back or coming in this week. And they have that emperor energy. They're taking the lead. They're communicating. And they're wanting to start and create this new abundant life with you. Because they realize deciding between the two options wasn't even a comparison. That you're just the most amazing human being because of your energy and not the starfish card. It's not how you look. It is the essence of who you are, how you are with other people your gentle nature, your strong nature, if you're a man, your ability to make somebody feel safe, whether you're a man or a woman, these are all these core characteristics that we want to look for in a partner. And my biggest tip for man manifesting a special person is to be the special person that you want to manifest. So if you have all these traits written down and how you want to feel in a partnership, you need to be doing that first. You need to be being that partner for the incoming partner. So when you start being what you want, you are then automatically drawn to what you want because you're a match to it. And that's just how the universe works. So I feel guided. Actually, I was going to do another animal card, but I got guided to use my ever unfolding heart deck. This is the first deck that I created. All of my decks are on my website and it's linked below in the description box. Feel free to go purchase them. Have my energy with you every morning or every evening as you pull cards. I have so many clients, local clients, who send me pictures of the Micah Magic cards that they pull. 
Oh, we have, where are you staying quiet in your life? Speak your truth. Don't shy from uncomfortable conversations. This is where growth occurs. So I think that communication, what's coming in this week is leaving hard times and finally surrendering, saying, I want this. I don't want to suffer anymore. I want to be in partnership with you. I want to be in partnership with whoever. And you're surrendering and speaking your truth. And I just heard there might be a big apology. Somebody might be apologizing. I know I had two clients this week texting me saying that they had somebody come back and apologize to them um, for past behaviors, for ghosting, for not showing up for them because they were under that trance. They were in a cloud, not seeing clearly that they were, um, you know, drawn to this other person who was, you know, maybe very superficial, all about looks, all about status, all about money. And now they're realizing that that's not what life and partnership is about. It's literally about the essence and the core of our being and who, who we are. And I believe that we all have a soul energetic signature and there's matches out there. There's multiple signatures that we can match up with during different stages of our signatures because <laughs> our, our, our penmanship is going to change every 10 years, right? So I believe that sometimes there's different people to match that. And then sometimes there's one person that continues to grow with us as we continue on. And everybody's path is so different that we don't know if we're meant to stay with somebody long-term or if it's like, time's up, we're changing, we're changing our penmanship. <laughs> we're changing our energetic signature and it's time to find a new match to do our next mission. So there's a lot of breakups happening right now because of this. And a lot of people sit back and go, I don't understand. I thought they were going to be married forever, but we all don't understand. They don't even understand why they feel that way too. So it's, it can be really like hard to process because you want it to work, but it's not working and your soul knows it. And it's like, man, I don't want to have to leave this, but yet I feel like I have to leave it. So I'm sending so much love. To, if it's anybody out there who's listening to this right now and you feel guided to leave a partnership, I'm so sorry. We will send you all the love and all the prayers. You got this. You can do it. Just speak your truth like that last card said and know that a celebration is coming soon. Okay. That could also mean take a vacation to the ocean, lake, beach, wherever you have water closest to you, rest and just wait for those next steps to come. Okay. You'll wake up inspired one day. All right, lovies, thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell, and I will see you at our midweek reading on Wednesday or Thursday. All right, peace out.